In this video, we get a question from Howard. Howard asks about how to deploy dehumidifiers. And uh, there's some specific things here that I think are really useful for us to discuss. So here we go with Howard's question. Hello, my name's Howard. I'm the owner operator of Comfort Diagnostics. I was just interested in learning more about dehumidifiers and sealed homes in our market. Um, where we should put them, should we just put them in the attic, just to do the attic, tie them into the AC units, how important are they, are they to have fresh air, and uh, et cetera. So just would like to see if you can talk about more about the humidifiers and sealed homes. All right, thanks, Howard. Thank you for taking the time to do this. And for anybody who's interested, you can go to speakpipe.com slash HVAC school to ask your question as well. Dehumidifiers are a great solution to solve a lot of problems in homes. Um, he asked specifically about sealed attics, which again, deploying a dehumidifier if you don't have a sealed attic. Now we're talking about attic markets that are hot and humid. Um, we call these green grass climates. More and more, we're seeing dew points increasing, which means humidity is increasing, temperatures increasing. Even in places like Ohio or even in the Northeast, you get moisture issues, you get challenges, discomfort, health problems, moisture issues, mold and mildew, that kind of stuff can happen. And so dehumidifiers can be a really great solution. But keep in mind, you only deploy the dehumidifier once you already are aware of a few different things. First is your HVAC equipment, your air conditioning equipment, properly installed, properly deployed, properly set up. And in a lot of cases, it's not. In the most common case is because the air conditioner is too big. So air conditioner is too big, that's a problem. Make sure to deal with that. Secondly, how do you have an air conditioner set up in terms of dehumidification? Does it have a nice cold coil during those periods of time when it's starting to ramp down? That's another thing to consider. Ventilation, talk about this all the time. Make sure you have proper ventilation, but not too much ventilation during these humid times. And that can happen easily if people keep kitchen hoods running too long or they're running bath fans all day, that kind of stuff. That ends up drawing air into the space from the outside. That can create a humidity issue. So those are things I always want you to think about first. Once you've kind of addressed that the building is pretty well sealed, it's relatively properly ventilated, or at least normally ventilated, nothing crazy is going on. You don't have any giant like channels coming down from the attic into the space, um, all that kind of stuff. Can, homeowners not leaving doors and windows open. They're not running bath fans all day long. They're not running kitchen exhausts way more than they need to. They're not venting dryers into the attic or into the house, leaking dryers into the house. So always kind of thinking about those sources. Once you've addressed that, now the question is, where do you put a dehumidifier? Well, if you have a sealed attic, I'm a huge fan of having a dedicated dehumidifier just in the attic. Now, there are people like Dustin Cole who talk about using the air conditioner to condition the attic, but he's also very careful to state that he deals with the humidity during construction when the house is actually being built. So you're keeping the moisture out of all of the stuff in the attic to begin with, and you're keeping it down during construction, so you're always kind of starting dry to begin with. That's a good practice, and clearly, because he's doing it and some others are, they're not even using a dehumidifier. They're just using the equipment to do it. I'm not personally a huge fan of mixing attic air with house air. Now, some people will argue, hey, look, if, you, if you're encapsulating it, it becomes part of the house, and some people even make it part of the house, right? They, you know, they'll build a loft or whatever. Okay, that's fine. It's just not my favorite general plan. Most cases, most places of the country, I like to seal the attic completely, insulate it at the actual roof deck. I love closed cell foam because it helps kind of tie everything together. It's because I'm in a hurricane market and I want everything that I can possibly do to keep the roof on. And sealed attics are actually better at that because now you're not like creating that uplift force. And closed cell foam kind of holds it all together. But foam can off gas and it's not my favorite to mix it with the inside air. So I still like to seal the actual ceiling and I like to just, just dehumidify the attic. Now, again, no matter how well you seal, you're still going to get some, some kind of communication from a moisture standpoint from the attic into the space. And what I generally find is for most applications, if you do that and the rest of the house is done properly and ventilated properly, um, that the house actually stays pretty controlled in relative humidity. Now, your specific question, though, is do you tie outdoor air into the dehumidifier? And the answer is if you are bringing in outdoor air, then you absolutely bring it in through the dehumidifier. But then the attic only design doesn't work, right? Because now you need that air to cycle through the actual home. And this is where Tim Distasio kind of created a nice system where you have a dehumidifier, it can do the attic, and then it can also shut off and bring in outdoor air and do the house. And it uses, uses dampers, uses power dampers to do this. Not a terribly complicated system. Um, it's not like you know, anything crazy, but it is more complicated than not doing that. So it requires additional cost. The other option is you could do two. You could do one dehumidifier for the attic, 
a smaller one maybe you could do another one for the house that brings an outdoor air and puts that into the house again market by market depends you have some people like my friend neil at comfort squad where they like to use an erv and so they're kind of doing continuous outdoor air through the erv they're venting out bath fan air from those spaces and they're bringing in outdoor air through that solution that's how they're handling outdoor air so then you can do a dehumidifier completely separately and not bring outdoor air into the dehumidifier Again, they're in a market where ERVs make more sense in Virginia, where it's not quite as humid as it is here where I am in Central Florida or in other Gulf Coast areas like maybe Houston or Austin or even worse, Naples or even worse, places like the Caribbean that I just was uh, in Grand Cayman where it's very, very humid. And so in those cases, ERVs probably aren't your best solution. Bringing it in through a dehumidifier does make sense. But the question of how do you do that and do the attic, it's a good question. If you're comfortable with just mixing the air all together from the attic and the house, okay, fine. You can literally just, you know, duck part of it into the attic and part of it into the house and just make it one big mixed happy family. So long as you're still balancing pressures and making sure you're not driving air in from outside or losing too much air from outside uh, in a way that you don't design for. Ultimately, this is going to require setting it up in a smart way, knowing kind of what you're wanting to accomplish and what you're wanting to stay away from. Are you okay with combining attic air with space air? Looking at the budget, what is our budget? To me, having a dry attic is a real priority. But again, that's because I've had so many issues with attics, duct sweating and all kinds of other issues. And for us, our primary humidity driver comes from the attic because the high dew point air in that attic and all the gaps and cracks that tend to exist around can lights due to initial construction. So for me, drying that attic out solves so many other problems with the house and moisture. And then just getting the sizing of the air conditioner right, making sure that it's set up properly for dehumidification can often do a pretty good job. But then when you think about bringing in outdoor air, if you have a very tight house, uh, you've done a blower door and you've dictated, okay, we need to bring in some outdoor air. Well, now then you've got to think about that. And that's where that strategy of bringing it in through the dehumidifier does make a lot of sense. Uh, It's kind of a safe place to put outdoor air, those mixed air conditions. When you take outdoor air and you just dump it into a return box, not great. You can actually get condensation inside the box and that can cause issues. But a lot of times how you bring in the outdoor air also makes a big difference. Just bringing it in and just dumping it into the side where it just sort of settles versus bringing it in and and ducting in sort of a 45 degree piece of metal. So that way it integrates more with the airstream and interlocking that with the blower. Um, That's a strategy that can that can really work very well uh, if done properly. And again, we have some best practices on this. There's a lot of really smart people and a lot of online groups. I would suggest interacting in groups like HVAC Grapevine, organizations like TEC, the Energy Conservatory, people like Jenry Garcia, people like Dustin Cole, people like Chris Hughes, and then obviously uh, Nikki Kruger and the Santa Fe team are going to be a great source when you're talking about dehumidifiers and ways to apply them. They'll be more than happy to answer questions if you reach out to them at the Santa Fe team. So definitely would encourage you to do that on this particular topic. And again, if you just go in the HVAC School app, you just type dehumidifier in to the search bar, you're going to find videos, you're going to find tech tips, you're going to find other podcasts where we go more in depth than this. But there isn't one answer. It really depends on your market, depends on budget, it depends on what you're willing to deal with in terms of communication of indoor and outdoor air, it depends on how well sealed the house is and how much ventilation you need. Should you measure things like CO2 and humidity and do it based on that? That's where things like Haven come in really handy. So you're going to have to figure out what kind of priority it is in your market and what it is for your clients and formulate a system that's going to work for you. I know there's a lot of probably a lot more questions and answers in there, but that is the reality of where we stand today on this question of dehumidification, how to deploy them and outdoor air. Again, thank you, Howard, for the great question. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.